In this video, we're going to be talking about the Azure Storage account and comparing it with the Azure Files service. Hi there, my name is Scott Duffy from GetCloudSkills.com and thank you so much for being here. I would really would appreciate if you smash the like button, hit subscribe, and let's get into it. So we're going to start off by creating an Azure Storage account. So we're going to talk about the difference between a blob storage and file storage in this video. When we create a storage account, we do have to put it into a resource group. I'm going to say create new and I'm going to give it called AZ storage. You can call it uh, whatever you would like in terms of your resource group. Now, when it comes to your storage account name, the name does have to be unique in this region. So uh, as soon as I enter a name, it's going to say already taken. So I'm going to have to uh, be a little bit more creative with it. AZ storage 2021 June, pretty, pretty creative. Now we're going to be creating a general purpose V2 storage account. Uh, we're not at this time going to upgrade to the SSD solid state disk premium storage. I don't require geo redundant storage. We're just going to start with the basic locally redundant storage. Now require secure transfer means it has to be HTTPS or SSL to do any kind of uh, API calls to it. I'm not going to have extra encryption data in a storage account already encrypted, but you do have this double encryption option. And for the rest of it, I will leave, I'll leave all the defaults basically. We could have, if we went into the um, Azure data lake storage, we could have this NFS option for storage. We won't get into data lake and enabling large file shares. So right now there's a maximum of five terabytes to store in it for, for, per file to store in an Azure Files account. If I do want to enable large files, that is going to further future restrict me to be using geo redundant storage. So once I click this, it's going to be restricted to a single region. I'll leave all of those as the default, so I won't select that. We won't talk about putting this onto a network. This is an extra security layer. We're going to leave this as a public endpoint. Now that doesn't mean that it's not secure. Uh, it means that you do have to have authorization and access key in order to access this. So we'll leave this as the default. We're also going to, uh, I'll disable the soft deletes. This is just a test. I'm not going to need to be able to undelete things. That would be a um, different video for a different day. So we just chose the most simplest options, locally redundant storage, uh, disabled some of those data protection options just for testing purposes. And I'm going to say create. So this doesn't take too long to create. So we'll give that a few minutes and then we come back to it. So we can see that it successfully created. In actual fact, we can uh, look at the operation details and see that it uh, took 22 seconds to, to provision this. So go to resource. Now, we are going to see that uh, all of the settings that we set up right here on the homepage, the monitoring, I do want to go down to show you the two options, which are containers and file shares. We're not going to talk about queues or tables in this video. So the container is a blob storage metaphor. You do have to create a container first, so I can call this my uh, first container. You'll notice that it is private so that even though there's a public API, I do need the access key. There's no anonymous access. If I did want to allow websites and the public on the internet to access files, I would have to choose one of these other options. So I'm going to leave it as private. Now, what is the purpose of this storage account? So a blob storage container just can contain any binary file. The whole word blob means binary large object. And so I can put JPEGs, images, PDFs, docs, any binary file into this. And it's just a container. There's no um, ordering. And in fact, there's not even a hierarchy, even though you can have a folder structure. It is more of a virtual folder structure in the naming and not so much of a true hierarchical structure, which is the data lake storage. So I could fill this with files. Now the, the best case for a container type storage is the programmable case where you have some type of application which can use a connection string to connect to this container and read and write files as needed. And so 
blob uh, containers are very good at being accessed programmatically. You can set um, life cycles. So for instance, if you want the file to go from hot storage to cool storage to archive storage over time, there's tools for that. There's also, you can also manually identify these as being hot or cool, paying more or less per gigabyte, paying more or less per transfer. You can share files with the outside uh, through a shared access signature, etc. So to me, this is sort of um, programmable storage. And it's a perfectly great use case. Now, if we go back up to the um, storage account and go into the file share, this has a very similar uh, feeling. If I can say create a file share, let's say I want to create this uh, first share. Now you can see that I can set a quota. And so um, I can say how much of this files can contain in this share. On the container side, there is no limit. The limit is the limit of the storage account. And the limit of the storage account is five petabytes. And so, you know, five million gigabytes, which is a lot. We can see that the file share does have a capacity of five terabytes, um, 5120 gigabytes. Remember, we did not choose the enable large file share option that would have raised this to 100. So let's say that I would, for this particular share, 25 gigabytes should be plenty. Again, I can um, choose between hot and cool storage for the share or an unoptimized version. Now the premium option would only be enabled if we had created a premium storage account. So you'll see that's grayed out. Transaction optimized, however, is kind of uh, are similar to premium for so for the hard disk, the HDDs. What it means is that we're expecting a lot of transactions. And so you, you could have the uh, heavy transaction workloads uh, without it being a premium share. For this, I'm just going to leave it as the hot share. That's just the normal uh, general purpose setting. So I'm going to leave it as hot. Now, similar to a container. Now I can uh, upload files into here, but there is more of a directory structure. And so I can create directories and subdirectories in a real hierarchical manner compared to the container. Now the container, like I said, does have a directory type structure, but it is more virtual. Um, this is more akin to a file share. Now the one of the advantages, now when you're thinking about creating a file share, uh, what you're talking about is more on the sense of mapping this to a drive letter. So let's say I wanted to map this to my on my local computer to a drive letter. I'm not sure I can do this because a file share might not work over the open internet port 445. I'll have to see if this, this port will be allowed to travel over my ISP. But... Now uh, we can see here, if I wanted to mount this drive letter to a server, I could use this code, this uh, PowerShell code, basically, to uh, run this, uh, to mount it to drive letter T. I can choose the drive letter. So this is a true file server. It uses the SMB uh, protocol. And you can see that it's a version three or higher because it says secure transfer required. So this is pure Windows file share. Uh, here's the command in order to install that. You can install that on as many servers as you want. Multiple servers can mount the same file share. Now there's also options for Linux and Mac OS. Okay. And like I said, there is an, there is an ISP limit. So it might not work from home, but if I had a Windows server or a Linux server inside of Azure, I could mount this file share. Now you'll notice on the left, what I don't have is the ability to um, have a shared access signatures or access keys or, so this file share is really an SMB. Uh, that's what you're intended to use it for. There it does support backups, just like a storage account would also support backups. But uh, really this is more for mounting on a server and not so much for programmable storage. 
like if we go into the container, we can see that you have different uh, options here. So anyways, that's the big difference between containers and file shares. Containers can contain a lot of data up to five petabytes and are usually programmed for access using an access policy, shared access signature, etc. Whereas a file share is mounted to a server and multiple servers can mount the same file share. It can have a quota. And if you enable large file share, it can even, even hold up to 100 terabytes. But there are different, different limits for this container. This has been Scott Duffy from Get Cloud Skills. Again, I appreciate the thumbs up if you can give that. That would really help this video in the YouTube algorithm. And hit subscribe if you want to see more videos talking about Microsoft Azure. Thanks a lot and have a great day.